Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to the war room. We got death. Madness is real. Kill Jimmy PJ B Austin a hot I am Jimmy. all y'all dead. How you wanna end up one or two hours show to keep the brain running with the premise to talk sports on a national level? Both with the topics, sort of like some rubbers when it's game time they like the fat five doing prime time. Sports be blind with speak their minds a little bit. For sports medicine and sports veterans and greats. The four for twenty-six sort of war in Kuwait. It's the war room with five nights at the round table, five Philly guys diversified and educated. What up, everybody out there in Radio Land? You are once again live in the war room, brought to you by War Room Sports on that WRS Podcast Network. I'm Devin McMillan, and I'm here at the round table with Jimmy the Blueprint Williams and that dude, B. Austin. Look, man, we got a great show for you guys today, but what's new? The madness of the NCAA tournament is already underway. The madness is real. <laughs> so we'll discuss the results from earlier and much more. We had a couple of upsets already in the works. Uh, about 30 minutes into the first hour, we're here, we'll hear from Richard Gian and Jamal Green of Retro Action Sports about their sixth annual annual Philadelphia Unsigned Senior High School Basketball Showcase. So get comfortable, keep it locked right here, and if you want to get in on a live conversation, make sure you join us right now in the JW Philly Realty chat room at blogtalkradio.com slash the war room, or you can join us on Facebook or Twitter at War Room Sports. Uh, you can call in directly when we open up the Digital Extreme Tech Hotline that number is 323-410-0012. We'll be opening that in about 45 minutes after we talk to the fellas from Retro Action Sports. Uh, when we're not live on the air, this is what we need all you guys out there to do. We need everybody to make sure that you visit warroomsports.com. Click on the WRS Podcast Network tab at the top of the page to listen to some great radio by our network partners. Take a ride on the Broad Street Line with Roy and Chris. Check out After Further Review with the Mayor, Groove to the Tissue and the Tape Hip Hop Show with Phil and Savad. Get caught in that sports trap on Sports Trap Radio with Brandon Pemberton and Anthony Green and a whole lot more. Uh, the network is on iTunes as well. And you can also check the listings over at FatsRadio.com. That's P-H-A-T-Z Radio.com for air times of all your favorite WRSP and sports shows, including our show, The War Room, which airs over there on Sundays and Tuesdays at 3 p.m. The big dance has begun, fellas. Yo, who? It, it's crazy already, but who, who you guys have taken it in your brackets? Who's who's your champion this year? Kentucky, and at this point, my bracket Kentucky, is Kentucky, and Kentucky. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to do what the B-Austin did and just take chalk, just play it safe. Because um, as chalk of right up. now, my bracket's already – yo, my bracket's already – yo, day one, my bracket is busted, man. Like, the parody in college basketball is crazy. Even even the games in which the uh, the, the the team that's the favorite to win, um, their competitive matches is not really like you know, just complete blowouts like it used to be. Now we'll see later yeah. on when Hampton plays Kentucky, but you know they can keep it close. Um, shout out to yeah. people from Hampton, you know a lot of friends from Hampton, but uh, y'all go about to lose bad. But um, Hampton you know, Institute. If they make that close, if they make that close, I ain't even watching the tournament no more. Like real talk. Right. No, see, yeah, yeah. You know. If, if if the Institute can keep that within 30 points, then I give them a whole lot of credit for, well, I, I give the NCAA a whole lot of credit for parity, as, as Jimmy was just speaking about, because I don't think the Institute oh, can keep it within 30 points. From what I saw from them the other night in the playing game um, <laughs> that nobody wants to call that, I, I don't know, man. They just didn't look strong enough for a team. I mean, we all know that, you know, they're – most likely just going to be food for Kentucky. But at the same time, they just didn't seem like they were good enough to even compete. Now, we've seen a lot of underdog teams actually compete and make these games tough. And I'm actually rooting for them to do that. You know, represent the MEAC. Shout out to HBCUs everywhere. I'm not really, you know, too caught up in that Howard-Hampton rivalry. But, you know, I just call it what it is. About it, it. You never know. You never know. I mean, their coach got yeah, a direct look. line to Jesus, so you never know. True, true. Yeah, he's a noodle. Listen, man, I, I, if Kentucky does not win by more than 15, then Hampton should advance. <laughs> they should get the win? <laughs> yeah, they, they should, the, the, the game should be scored on a curve. Um, 
Lady, shout out to the ladies that like the curve. But yeah, if um, Hampton <laughs> doesn't doesn't lose by more than fifteen, then Kentucky lost. Like 15? that's that's what it is. Uh, shout out they to the act. Huh? What'd you say? You said fifteen. That's it. Please? Yeah, I mean, he if they if yeah. he said if they lose if they don't lose by more than fifteen, then they should win the game. They should give the game to yeah. Hampton if they lose by fifteen or yeah. less. <laughs> so basically, that's, he's that's, expecting them to get drubbed by like forty. But if they can keep it that competitive, Kentucky needs to sit. Nah, out. My expectation, my expectation is like sixty. Damn. Like that's the expectation, like about sixty. Yeah, they they're going. They don't, man, they don't do that no more. NBA <laughs> player. But think about it. It used to be like that in college basketball. But, I, you know, people don't get drugged by 60 in a tournament no more unless you're on the women's they side. And they, get the the Andy Reed on. Yeah. they get the yeah, Andy Reid on. I don't even know if they get the Andy Reid on. I just don't know if the the uh, players at the biggest programs these days are that good to smack anybody by 60, 70 points. Like, you know, we talk about this all the time, how – you know, a first round or a lottery pick back in the 90s or before that, that's, that's like immediate impact, no. almost immediate superstar for most yeah. of those guys. These days, it's not really like that. A lottery pick is still a project, yeah. so these guys aren't as normally. Good. So the, I don't think the competition gap is as big. Nor, normally, I would agree, but there are certain NCAA Division One conferences that, like, shouldn't exist. And sad to say this, but the MEAC is one of the MEAC can't. There is certain Division two teams that would blow teams out in the MEAC. However, so I, I just expect true. But however, the MEAC has gotten into the tournament and done work, uh, you know, oh, relatively yeah. over the last 15, yeah, 20 years. Or so. So. Oh, last, it's not an yeah, every plan. once in every it's once in 10 years. Either. It's not an equal playing field either, though, and there's a lot oh, of no. reasons behind that that we can dig into in a whole episode. But if we're if we're oh, the, if the equal playing field in HSB in HP, HS, HBCUs, I'm that's I'm used to going to the bank and whatnot. Anyway, in HBCUs, <laughs> we're able to attract the talent they used to. For these schools, you know, um, back when these schools wouldn't allow, they wouldn't even let us play, play with them. Then then we'd be laughing yeah. at like you know the. Every every other conference, we'd be laughing at them, but that's either so here. Jim, I was having this conversation with my wife today, actually. You know, I was kind of explaining that to her. So do you think, like, every black dude who don't play for an HBCU is a sellout? <laughs> because, look, they didn't let you play before. And now we've abandoned the schools that, you know, used to be the powerhouses because, you know, they were only the only schools where black dudes could play. Now those schools are trash. Man. Athletically, Listen, because we can't attract anybody. It's hilarious. It's hilarious. I'm I'm actually reading a book now, and I'm pretty sure you guys both heard of it, the Forty Million Dollar Slave. Um, and in the beginning of the book, he talks about like you know before those schools would allow us to play there, and how strong like Morehouse and Hampton's football team were. They could have beat pro teams back then. And to hear like you know the, the historical references, like, and I look at them now, like, really? That really happened? But I don't. I wouldn't necessarily call them a sellout because they're trying to do what's best for them and um, to how to put food on their family. But, I know. I, um, I, I was joking because I mean a lot of these dudes don't even know that history. First of all, and that's the problem. <laughs> the problem is they don't know the history, but they're not taught the history. And I think that even more so than the athletes, a lot of us who are graduates of uh, HBCUs, we're sellouts too because we don't look out or give back at all. Not saying us because we all went to an HBCU. Oh, but we don't look out for the cookout. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, I'm a sellout in some regards. I don't, I don't look out as much as I probably should, but you know, so a school is only as strong as its alumni. Simple as that. That's why my school is Diesel. <laughs> All right, y'all. Let's let's get into this program a little bit, man. Let's talk a little bit about <laughs> what happened this week. <laughs> Before we start, real quick, um, in our chat room, huh? Scott, you can say so he thinks Kentucky and Hampton is going to be like the dream team versus Angola. I mean, you think it's going to be that bad, yo? <laughs> Damn, somebody going to get elbowed in the Kentucky chest real hard. Can beat, Kentucky can beat the Sixers and Knicks. Yeah, right, well, well actually, most, to be like, honest, we're going to talk about that a little later, too, because of some comments Larry real Brown quick. made. Yo, real quick, <clears> though, that, that was, like, the most lopsided in terms of talent I've seen in any contest in any sport. Like, the Dream Team versus Angola was, like, embarrassing. And then... 
Your man. Yo, the Angolans, <laughs> Jimmy, they all they weighed an average of like 146 pounds playing against yeah, grown men. He's still was throwing elbows like that's Barkley literal. Still throwing elbows like that's the not a, game. Not an exaggeration. Yo, when, when Barkley hit that skinny dude in his chest with the elbow, like his chest wrapped around Barkley's elbow, like he caved his chest <laughs> in when he yo, did it. Was awesome. <laughs> yo, they came out ready to play the dream team with flies around their head. <laughs> yo! <laughs> All right, yo. On yeah. that note, all right, we gotta Angola go. We gotta huddle. move on. All right, my fault. My fault. My fault. My fault. Right, hey, Jimmy. <laughs> he said flies. Yo, yo, Jimmy. Still everybody. Go and check out the Portuguese. And look great. Yo, we love right. you anyway. We just ignorant. Tell everybody what happened this week. I didn't want to cry. Yes, sir. <laughs> While you were on the grind, at least for this week, I don't know about after this comment, is brought to you by Direct TV. <laughs> If you'd like a better TV experience than cable has to offer, including the NFL Sunday ticket, go to our website at warmsports.com and click on that Direct TV logo. And guess what? You can get a discount rate. Everybody likes a discount. Just go to warmsports.com and click on the Direct TV logo. Gentlemen, Tiger Woods has to continue to just um, be replaced everywhere, yo. I, I haven't heard anything positive about Tiger Woods in a good five years. But now, even in video, he's have, being replaced by I Rory. Have, yeah. I heard Tiger get a lot of really? ass. <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. I mean, that's true. He's still winning in that regard. He's being replaced by Rory McIlroy as EA Sports golf cover boy. Any thoughts on this? Um, I guess it's, it's one of those passing of the guards things that had to happen. Um, the, the crazy part about it is it actually happened while Tiger Woods was still number one in the world. Well, not not Rory getting on, but they EA ended his relationship with Tiger in 2013 when he was still number one in the world. So, you know, it probably had just a lot to do with, first of all, his fall from grace being about his social life. And even though he was number one in the world, he wasn't winning any majors. Um, if you're a marketing guy, you you had to see this coming. You know, Rory is their new hope. And. I don't know. It's just crazy because Tiger's been the cover boy since 1998. It goes to show you, though, that the game was really just a game and Tiger was just that dude that they used to make money because I always thought it was his game. I didn't know he was just the cover boy. You know what I mean? I thought nah, it was his game. I thought nah, it was Tiger don't... Woods golf. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, nah. I didn't know he could have one drop of Negro, Negro blood. So they was like, no, nah, you don't own nothing. We'll pay you. Yeah, okay. I didn't know he could be replaced though. B. I thought I thought when it was over, the game would just stop being made. I didn't know they could just Brody Tiger put somebody else on the cover. How oh, how long ago did Tiger get caught with the toots? But how long ago was that? Uh, twenty ten maybe. Twenty ten in twenty ten, I said that Tiger never returned to glory. And I didn't really believe it when I said it. I just wanted to say something and seem shocking. But, like, what I said is kind of, like, coming true. I feel bad for the dude now. <laughs> I probably shouldn't since he still gets 3 or $4 million in appearance. But he he's man. falling, man. Still the tour, the tour's right, moneymaker. <laughs> here's my thing, man. It, it's, it's, sort of, it's sort of like this. I know he could be replaced. It was an EA game. So it was along the same lines as, like, an NBA Live. Um, which is weak at this point. Two K didn't surpass them, but uh, Madden. you know, Madden, well, Madden NBA. But they had a different cover boy every every year. It's still Madden's game. I'm waiting for them to say Madden fell off, so we're gonna get us to John Gruden. John Gruden's football. Yo, yeah, yeah, <laughs> Gruden football. But you know, at this point, um, that's a part of pop culture. They're not gonna do that. But what I'm saying is, um, a lot of times people take this stuff so personal. I see a lot of people upset about this. Oh, you know, yeah. they try to pull the race card and pull the race card and that and. I ain't even black. You know, I, yeah, he's Calabonian for one, and for two, um, and that's his words, not mine. I think he's a black man, but with that being said, I don't even get mad when he pulled a race card because that's why we got it to pull it. So, but my point is this: this I think you got to, I think you got to pull it strategically and logically, though. <laughs> my, you devalue it when you pull it for dumb stuff. <laughs> a lot, a lot of times, people take this stuff so personal. Um, you yeah. see it when, in the NFL when people get traded or cut or, you know, he loses his endorsement. Like, at the end of the day, this is a business. Like, keep that in mind. Like, 
it's entertainment and all that, but it's still business. Tiger can be replaced just like anybody else can be most, replaced. Yeah, but most, yeah, most fans replaced. don't have a business. They they work for someone. They got a boss, so they they don't understand that. That's not that's I mean, not even to if be you have understood. A boss, if, if, and that's even worse because if you have a boss, you better understand you that because you understand it. Going. Yeah, you could be next. <laughs> you understand it more than somebody else. <laughs> you need to understand. You know what I mean? So, yeah. So my whole point is, like, you know, he's not he's not doing what he has to do in in terms of at this point, personal life and professional life. So he got to be replaced. Anybody can be replaced. I don't care. Nobody is bigger than the game. Other than Wayne Gretzky. <laughs> no, nah, the symbol might have been bigger than the game. They not they not taking that jump man off the side of them Jordans though. Exactly. Oh that yeah, that's that's product. That's product. <laughs> yeah. That's I, product. I, 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 I guess mean, I, I, mean, I fully understand cousin. it. You gotta move on to what's new and fresh and what's gonna make you more money. So hey. Tiger had a long run. Anyway, he was on the cover since '98. Like I said, he was on the cover so often that I thought it was actually his game. So his game, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's made enough. At money. this point, he should mention with EA Sports. Anyway, um, shout out, shout out another, to the Calibrin Asian. Yeah, shout to the Calibrin Asian community. We love you. Um, next story: Demar Smith is reelected as the National Football League's uh, PA Executive Director. Uh, so shout to him in winning his election. We voted for another Smith. <clears throat> I ain't vote for nobody. But look, um, Demar Smith took a couple of shots on his way back in. You can't say on his way out because, you know, he's on his his third three year term, you know, being in charge of the NFL PA. Um, his uh, opponents, the people that he beat were in a former NFL players, Jason Belzer, Sean Gilbert. Robert Griff- Griffith. Um, also on the ballot were James Aiko, Arthur M- McAfee, um, or McAfee, Rob London, uh, Andrew Smith, who was on our show last week prior to the, the, the balloting, and John Stuffelbeam. Um, what he said, though, he said there will always be those who will sacrifice their dignity in a race to the bottom so they can climb over others to get to the top. I will not join them, and no human should. So shots fired. I'm not really sure who they were fired at, <laughs> but um, supposedly it was a nasty race. You know, we we got the opportunity to hear a little bit about the insides of that race, but I didn't know that there were things going on that would call somebody to say this in their quote unquote victory speech. So um, shout out to Demar Smith for his his third three year term. Guess that's what the players want. Yo, uh, whoever he's talking to, they know. Yeah, they know. <laughs> they definitely know. All right. We going to see Austin? I thought you were going to No. All right, guess not. Shout out to D. Murray. I'm happy for All right. him. Well, let's move on then. Let's talk about DeMarco Murray. Uh, the Philadelphia Eagles halfback DeMarco Murray. Um, spray yo, tan. Which one? Um, it, was one of, it was one of those. Yeah, spray tan. It was one of those. Um, and what's the NFL guy that uh, I, I'm getting ready to ask you a dumb question? Um, Charlie <laughs> no Casserly, I think his name. He works on the NFL uh, network. Charlie Casserly, the, uh, the 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 GM or president, right. or whatever he used to do. Yo, what did, what he, he said was something? like, yo, he was <clears throat> killing Shady. He was like, this is, a, this is a huge upgrade for the Eagles. He was like, nobody wants a <laughs> running back that runs right and left. I was like, yeah, he was going in on him. I'm like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually like, saw that because he kept else? repeating it every time he got on TV. He kept repeating them, you know. Yo, of how much of an money this was for the Eagles. <laughs> like, nobody wants a running back that runs right to left. I say, yo! Anyway, with all that being said, DeMarco Murray is now an Eagle, but he rented a billboard in Dallas to thank Cowboys fans for his time there. Um, you know, Shady made an Instagram video. We ain't getting no billboard. But, uh, you know, what do you guys <laughs> think about uh, DeMarco taking the time and money to do this? And how do you feel about Shady. athletes in general when they're on their way out thinking fans? Shady got traded, it's a class so he wasn't, he wasn't going to pay for a billboard. Dude dude left on his own, so he felt with his newfound fame, and well, not fame, his newfound fortune, that he that's the least he can do. My bad, B. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it's a quote-unquote cliche, classy, quote-unquote move. I mean, it, it, that it's, it's pretty popular for guys to do that who have been in a, in a particular stop for a long period of time. Um, well, there's usually an ad in the newspaper. 
full page ad or something like that. Yeah, full page ads. I've I've seen some billboards. Um, yeah, I'm like good for him. I mean, he's showing appreciation to the fan base. But as Jimmy had had, had alluded to earlier in the program, uh, <laughs> fans take take these things personal. So I've already seen Dallas start Everybody the slander company. on my man Spray Tan talking about his low moral character. Meanwhile, they signed Hardy, but uh, talking about his low moral character <laughs> and he's. Uh, he, he he he! They used him up. He's not going to be any good because he had 392 carries last year. He's terrible. Oh, he right. gets hurt all over the time. So. <laughs> he's a bum. Yeah, all of he's over risk. All of a sudden, that's not. But it goes both ways. Uh, Cowboys fans. I see it no. all the time, and it's the greatest thing ever. Like. Yo, the the day DeMarco was signed, it was like, well, without the line, he's garbage. Um, his his character is questionable. Like, even when Patrick Willis announced his retirement, I saw Niners fans, so called Niners fans, like, well, he ain't been good in years anyway. Like, yeah. as, as soon as someone's off your team, the hate comes out. But you know what? That's how it's supposed to be. That's how it's supposed <laughs> to be. I agree with it. But, but you know what, fellas? You off my spot. F you. Taking it personal, <laughs> it goes both ways because if you look at Philadelphia Eagles fans now, you know, all of a sudden DeMarco's a beast. But I'm not – that's not even really what I said that for. If you you look at this billboard situation, you look at how many Eagles fans are saying, oh, he's a classy dude, he this and that. But, you know, this was the same dude who was a cowboy cockroach who, you know, they might have killed in, the, in, a, in a private dark alley like just two months ago. But <laughs> – is it, like Jimmy said, it, it all depends on who's on your team and who's not on your team. Because hey, he went from had sex with his best friend's wife. Yeah, he ain't classy. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't classy. Oh, he ain't at, all. at all. Sam Bradford uh, uh, recruited him to come to Philly. Sam better watch his woman. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, shout out to Sam Bradford, girl. man. My man Mike, got to got a casino somewhere because you know he a uh, Chippewa and whatnot. Anyway. Um, Watch it, girl. Mace will hit. It. Spray tan will hit it. You got to deal with it. <laughs> we talked about Hampton University. Um, you know, making it to uh, March Madness. Some some say they've already won a game. Some call it a playing game. I don't know how you guys define it, but um, they have to go up against Kentucky, the big powerhouse. And Hampton's coach uh, claims to have Jesus on a uh, speed dial. Reggie Miller was the one who made a comment. They're going to need, you know, Jesus or what have you in order to beat Kentucky. Yeah, act of God. And he picked up the phone. Yeah, act of God or something like that. And he picked up the phone and said he got Jesus on speed dial. Um, my problem with this whole thing is he had the phone backwards when he was trying to act it out. Like, yo, what are <laughs> no, you doing? I didn't get that part. Well, it is so Jesus you're talking video. to. He so he... Yeah, he did. Because I saw the, the part that it was outside yeah. of his face was glowing. Like, I, I noticed that too. Yeah. Um. For me, that this was one of those things that was to me, it was corny and clever at the same time. You know, somebody's doubting your team that much, saying you need an act of God. So I think it was clever for him to bring Jesus into the mix, but I think him putting on the whole show for like 20 seconds with the phone pointing the wrong way. I think he took the clever and and messed it up and turned it into corny. So yeah, <laughs> but I would, I would shout out to him, man. Represent the Miac. Me yet? He's not used to being in that situation, and so he had a yeah, we don't do had press conferences in the media. We don't do press conferences. Yeah, so we don't do. Yeah, so he 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 got excited. He, he ran away with it. Um, so my thing is because his team is about to get bludgeoned. Tongue, though, man. What do you say, Jim? Your slander game got to be better than that. Like I would have yeah. took a shot at Reggie Miller. I'd have been like, he needed to act the god to win a chip. Look like it never came through. I would have said he needed a dentist and just left it at that. But that's just me. I would have said, I would have said, I would have said, I would have said Reggie, how'd you get that acting career on uh, Star Trek? Looking like that. <laughs> or I'd have just got petty with it and just said your mama. Something like that. Yo, yo, got yo, or you could have said you ain't better than your uh, sister, though. Shout like, out to I would have tissue in the tape. <laughs> he's a, a Hampton alumni. Um, he's in our chat room talking about they about to beat Kentucky's uh, fist with their face. Oh, so, yeah, I, didn't <laughs> a, I didn't know he went to an institute. He went to an institute? Yeah, oh, the man. whole tissue and the tape crew is is from, from Hampton. Oh, Those are our, our MEAC brothers. 
supposedly our rivals. You know, I don't, I don't get into all that, but <laughs> especially at, especially in athletics, do. like what claim do we lay as far as athletics are concerned? Howard, we haven't been to the tournament yeah, since '92, and when we went to the also, tournament, Scott, it was uh-huh. not when we went to the tournament. The 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 competition gap was what we were talking about earlier. Kansas put their foot in our ass in '92. But, but it's all good. They, it all they, always throw, up in there. they always throw the MEAC the, the best team in the country. So that's how it goes within the MEAC. Yo, but listen, uh, Scott U. Kevin says that DeMarco Murray actually sponsored his son's uh, basketball basketball uniforms. He's a classy guy. Um, Scott U. Kevin, I'll be seeing your son on like uh, the internet. Like, he's like, he about to be a star. So DeMarco actually putting work in, in the community, man. So tell your you know, son to watch his girlfriend. He's still- Yo, he still would get at your girl or your wife, though. Like, just because he bought some uniforms, you know what I mean? I mean, I used to watch his watch his girl, B. <laughs> watch his chick. Oh, man. Anyway, with all that being said, man, let's move on to uh, give some birthday shout-outs before we uh, move further. So, Dev, tell everybody who's having a birthday. No doubt, because in a few minutes, uh, we should be having uh, Richard Guillen and Jamal Green from Retroaction Sports on to talk about the uh, Philadelphia Unsigned Senior Showcase that's coming up in April. Uh, but before we do that, let's uh, talk some birthdays, like Jimmy said. All right, everybody, birthdays, as usual, are brought to you by Digital Extreme Technology. Do you or your business need a custom website? Well, for dynamic, professional, and most of all, affordable custom website solutions, you need Digital Extreme Technologies. No need to break the bank for an effective online presence, top quality, results driven websites at incredibly affordable prices. Financing options are available. So visit digitalextremetech.com or call 267-205-4203. That's 267-205-4203. And for discounted rates, be sure to tell them that War Room Sports sent you. My birthday, yay! All right, celebrating a birthday today is one Hito Turkoglu who turns 36. Y'all remember when Tito, uh, Tito, Hito, <laughs> he was that dude in like 2009 when Orlando made it to the finals. Like, and Yo, then it seemed like one year, the very next year, year, he fell off like Humpty Dumpty or somebody. Like, what happened? No, he must have been using steroids yeah, that year because that year he was amazing. <laughs> Yo, he was, he was saying he's one of the best like um small forwards in the in the world at that time. And the very Did next he, year, I think he got paid too. He got paid. Yeah, he was, yeah. Didn't he go to Toronto? He went he to Derek Coleman. Everybody, <laughs> Derek yeah, Coleman got, he got paid. That money. Yeah, cool. yeah, he quit. <laughs> he's like, yeah. I'm good. I send this to my now family. He's, still playing. he's on the Clippers roster, sitting on the bench, taking steroids, lifting weights. <laughs> <laughs> they call him the All Turkish right. Jordan. I don't know why. Yeah, they went they went too far with that one. So shout out to Hito, um, the Turkish Hito. Uh Antonio Daniels turns 40, and as solid of an NBA backup as he's always been in his career. The only thing I could think of is when Allen Iverson crossed him over, made him fall, and as he was falling, as he was on the ground, he crossed him again, and he was like reaching while he was on the floor. So AI like played him <laughs> out with a double move. <laughs> Yo, as solid as he was, that's all I think about when I when I see dude. I remember every single moment of that instant. AI had on the white unit with the white headband. <laughs> And as he came down the court, he faked left, and Antonio Daniels got shot by the D.C. sniper. And his right ankle looked like it went. And then he tried to recover and play defense from the floor, and then the D.C. sniper shot his left ankle, and he just tumbled. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Then I saw him in a CVS. I saw him in a CVS about a year later. He was in a corny suit. He makes too much money to wear the type of suit he had on. And I said, hey, dog, how your legs feel? He didn't know what I was talking about. He just kept it moving. How can he not? That's the highlight of his career. <laughs> oh, and by the way, um, still uh, never retired either. The, the homies from uh, Retro Action Sports, if y'all happen to be on the line waiting, make sure you press one so that we know you're in there. Um, next birthday, uh, Rick, Rick, Mer- Rick Meyer. 
I think that's how you pronounce his name. Former quarterback. Uh, he turns 45 today. Um, wasn't he supposed to be something that he wasn't? I always give Rick Meyer and um, McGuire mixed up a little bit. Which one of them had the overbearing father that <laughs> that wanted them to be a quarterback since, like, the day they came out of the womb? I can't, what? yeah. I think it was Rick Meyer. Oh, that, I think no, it, I not, can't. Really I think it was McGuire. I think it was McGuire's Rick brother. Yeah. Either. You're talking about um. You're talking about that 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 bum that played Marinovich. for the Raiders. Uh, Marin- Ty Marinovich. Marinovich. Ty Marinovich. Yeah. No, his pop. His pop had him doing quarterback drills at like the age of three. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. All right. Man, what happened? What happened with that? How'd that work out? <laughs> well, he went not to the Raiders, much. so nothing really works out when you go to the Raiders. But uh, Rick Meyer, Rick Meyer was another one of those guys who, um, you know, solid collegiate career and average at best in the NFL. I mean, you know, that's all you can really say about Rick Meyer. All right. Well, shout out to uh, Tyrone Hill, a uh, dude who gets slapped in his head uh, during a uh, layup line by somebody from the opposing team and fakes an injury so he doesn't have to play against that guy later on that night. Um, shout out, shout out, shout out to, to Tyrone Hill looking at him, <laughs> making him turn the stone. Shout out to uh, Mumra and, and everybody like that. Um, <laughs> Tyrone Hill turns 47 today, man. And we want to give an RIP birthday shout out to a great Philadelphia Philly, Richie Ashburn. Um, born March 19th, 1927, died September 9th, 1997. So we'd like to give a nice big War Room salute to all of these folks on their birthdays. My birthday, yay! All right, so like I said, if if the guys from Retroaction Sports, if you guys are waiting on the line, make sure you press one so we know that you're waiting. We see some people on the switchboard, but we don't know if you're waiting or not because you haven't pressed one. All right, but until then, the show must go on, so... Right about now, what we're going to do is uh, tell you guys how to get in touch with us. Give me a sec, uh, Jim. Can somebody take that over real quick? Yes, sir. No Absolutely. Doubt. Go ahead, be awesome. You got Go it. Go ahead, brother Jim. Okay. Check out our website at warroomsports.com. While you're there, be sure to sign up for the War Report, our weekly newsletter. Click on the Contact Us tab to send a message to us about our company, our show, or to inquire about sponsorship and advertising opportunities. For general inquiries, email us at info at warroomsports.com. While you're browsing the site, click on the Memorabilia tab to buy War Room Sports merchandise, and then click on the Blog tab to read our latest sports articles in the All's Fair in Sports and War blog, one of the most acclaimed blogs in the universe when it comes to the sports and culture stuff. Then you can click the respective icons and tabs to like our Facebook page, follow us on Twitter, or subscribe to our iTunes podcast. Watch our webcast at warroomsportstv.com. Listen to the radio network at wrspn.com. That's wrspn.com. And go and download our free War Room Sports mobile app to get everything I just mentioned on the go. Join the w- JW Philly Realty chat room right now during the show at blogtalkradio.com forward slash the war room. To enter the chat room, just sign up for free profile on Blog Talk Radio. If you don't want to create an account, just sign in through your Facebook or Twitter account. And while you're at it, click follow to get the updates and reminders about the show. We'll be taking questions and reading posts from Facebook, Twitter, and other social media platforms as well, as well as the chat room during the show. To call in and speak with us, just dial the Digital Extreme Technologies hotline, 323-410-0012. Press 1 when prompted. If you're already listening from your phone, just press 1 if you want to talk. All right. No doubt. No doubt. Jim, can, uh, screen team that. Let's let's uh, talk. Let's get in some, some hot topics for for a second before we get our guest on the line. Um and hot topics as usual are brought to you by Audible. Is your schedule too hectic to read as much as you want? Well try audiobooks and kick back and let someone else do the reading for you. All you got to do is visit Audible and sign up for your free trial 
at audibletrial.com forward slash war room sports. In no time, you can be listening to the latest bestsellers, hands free, stress free, while getting other things done at the very same time. All right. Um, the, the NCAA tournament is in effect. And I, I know you guys have been watching because it's been a wild day so far. We had two number uh, four, two number threes go down at the hands of number 14, UA, UAB upset Iowa State, um, and Georgia State upset Baylor. Um, and we're going to talk about that in a minute after we get our, our special guests on the line because we have some very important stuff to talk about on their end. The Philadelphia unsigned senior basketball showcase for boys and girls high school seniors um, will take place in Philadelphia April 18th and 19th. And on the line with us right now is two of the uh, creators of this event. This is the sixth annual uh, event like this. So we're going to have Jamal Green and Richard Gian on with us to talk a little bit about it. Fellas, you're in the war room. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. How you guys doing? Yep. Are we good, man? Hey, y'all guys rough, man. Y'all talking about my boy Tyrone Hill, man. Y'all guys <laughs> rough up DC, man. Hey, but we, we Sixers <laughs> fans, though, man. We hey. Sixers fans, so hey, it's all love. Man. It's all love. We from Philly, so we, we got love for him. We just call it yeah. how it is. I mean, he did get brody by we, we weren't that another bad. gentleman. We weren't that bad. I mean, it didn't get that ugly, no pun intended. <laughs> he said it didn't get that ugly. I'm hoping, y'all. I'm 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 hoping that I don't have no tape flying around and somebody may have crossed me. I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> Are we definitely gonna talk Y'all about might it? look my name up after this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, well, so no uh, well, uh, let's let's talk a little Hello? bit about, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about the showcase because this is the sixth annual uh, showcase going on. So yes, it is. just let the audience know, um, you know, let them know what it is, you know, where it's going down and when it's going down. Well, like you said, the sixth annual uh, showcase, which we have every year at uh, MOTEP Charter School in Philadelphia. And uh, what we do is we, uh, we originally started because we just wanted to help kids in the tri-state area and all over tri-state all over we just really wanted to give uh kids a shot and a chance to get recruited who you know who are most on from like the uh public leagues and the catholic leagues who really like weren't getting highly recruited so what we did originally we started we just got kids in the gym and called some coaches up and we uh we were luckily and we were blessed to get a lot of kids in school um over the past uh, five to six years, so um, we, you know, we we really been expanding uh, to get just helping kids get in school. That's like really like our, our number one goal is to expose the kids. And uh, the, uh, most people they can go to uh, retroactionsports.wordpress.com for more information um, about the events. But we uh, this year we're looking to. Um, we look. We're looking to have over sixty schools, uh, colleges that's come now. That that's including junior college, Division One, Two, Three, and also a lot of prep schools come out to the event. Okay. Okay. And it's um when is the event being held? What, what's the date? Uh, April April eighteenth in Philly, PA, at Emerald Tup Charter School. Okay. And, and uh, the... what we normally do? That's the boys. April 18th. And we, yeah, what we do is we play five games. Yeah, yeah. The girls on the 19th. And they'll okay. be held at Mastery Charter. Uh, 5700 Wayne Avenue in Philly, PA. Um, yeah. So you're yeah. saying the, the, the boys when you usually play five games? Yes, five games. So and all the games work? are videotaped and highlighted. How does that work? Like you I'm have a, a roster of you have a roster of players. Yeah. And like say if I'm if I'm one of these players in this, like how many of those five games would I play? Or the, or does that depend on 
how many you know people you actually have that signed up a combination of both if you could play we're gonna have you out there okay <laughs> trust me you. you could play we're gonna have you out there and you know we we, we extending this to dc too you know we, we we're not gonna discriminate it's not just the philly thing like we 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 extend this to dc we have kids coming down from all over but of course we try to make sure we take care of our back, our own backyard first because we originated, we wanted to just give kids from the Philly area more looks because, you know, things happen, especially with us inner city kids. So we wanted to, we wanted to provide a platform for them to say, all right, whatever your situation is, okay, this the event. You know what I mean? Like, and, and you know, like I said, we don't discriminate. D.C., New York. Virginia, we got kids coming from all over. Yeah, that that's a good point because there's been some people throughout the you know the history of Philly, especially the public league. You know, you got people like right. uh, Jared Kears, uh, Flip Murray, who didn't right. go to D one schools right. not because they weren't talented enough, just because certain things happen. They end up going to a D two school, right. and and you know Flip makes it to the league and has a pretty good career. So. I definitely understand, you know, where, where y'all going with this. Jimmy, you said you had a question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, my question is, um, now, this is for this upcoming season. So, essentially, if, if a coach were to see talent they like, uh, say this April, this is for the, the following year. So, this is for seniors only, right? Yes, unsigned seniors. But we also have a game um, for kids who, let's say, um, for whatever reason, they may want to junior college or – they may have unfortunately gotten into whatever the situation was, um, and they may be 19 or 20. We we also have a game for that, for guys who play one year JUCO and for whatever, it didn't work out. Okay. So yeah, we have the high schoolers. We have, yeah, we have the high schoolers, like right now, who are about to graduate, but then we, but then we also have a game. Sometimes things happen and you have kids lingering. So, of course – they're still going to call us because one thing about us, we're like, we're mentors for life. We're not like people who say, oh, you just blew it. You know what I'm saying? You know, you, we, you know, we done with you. We normally, we may have a kid that's 21 that's more mature, more serious. He may have just flunked out in high school, but he turned 21 working. He may be taking classes at a local community college, and now he's ready. He's more mature. He's ready because he's made mistakes, and then we help them out as well. So we pretty much do the dirty work on the back end. Yeah, All right, so um, that's, that's good. We definitely got to give the girl side some love. So how how does their yeah, showcase absolutely. go? Yeah, let's on? Give the girls the same, some love. Is it the same amount of uh, games for the girls? Well, no, actually, um, this year we've all kind of met up and realized that there was an even bigger void on the girls' side of things. I don't know if a lot of you guys keep up with just Philadelphia girls' basketball. They don't have the same support structure that the boys have because, obviously, the girls' game isn't as entertaining. So this right. year will be our inaugural year of having a girls' platform. And right now we're just going to start with 40 players, um, but they're still going to follow the same system. The games will be filmed. Um, the coaches, we expect at least over 30 to show up for the inaugural event on the 19th. Um, and, you know, they they still going to have a coach's packet. All the games that the coaches, the college coaches buy a packet, they all include full games of every game, both games that will be played that day. So it, okay. it's really shaping up to be something really great. Where uh, Registration right now is really filling up fast and it's overflowing throughout the tri-state area. So it's what we're very excited about. Now, when you say that you guys reach out to other uh, geographies and locale, um, are there plans to expand the actual event outside of the Philadelphia region uh, into Jersey, down to D.C. or Baltimore, or are you more or less inviting players from those other places to come and play? I mean, we're really just inviting them because – it's turning into something bigger than this area, um, but we never want to lose the focal point because obviously, right. you know, we've actually helped other markets set up a system 
for the, you know, getting exposure out for their, you know, their community members. But we really want to focus just on Philadelphia itself because that was the, you know, the origin of what we were trying to do. We originally wanted to help Philadelphia kids. But, you know, we've always had, obviously, you know, the Philadelphia basketball family is not just concentrated in Philadelphia. So we got college coaches that are in this area, college coaches that right now are in Nevada and Florida. So if they say, hey, listen, I got these guys and I want them to get the exposure that's being created in Philadelphia, we definitely just invite them out to come out and fly in or drive in or whatever the situation is. But we're not really trying to um, expand this particularly all over the place, but we've always worked with partners in different markets to help them establish their own thing. Got you. Got you. Now, how can how can businesses, small business, midsize, whatever size brand get involved uh, on a sponsorship level, advertising level or contribute um, you know, via donation, assuming that you guys are are not for profit, you may not be. So I don't want to I don't want to overstep with that assumption. But how can you guys partner with brands so that your benefit is is financially and their benefit is really helping the kids and getting exposure as well? Well, they can definitely go onto the website retroactionsports.wordpress.com. Um, my contact is available on there. Jamal Green's contact is available on there. Rasul Hodge, uh, another partner of ours, contact is available on there. And, you know, we exactly have a a pretty much strategic budget. And, you know, we let them know exactly what our expenses are and what we're trying to do. Um, Last year, maybe about two years ago, Dickie Simpkins um, from the Championship Chicago Bulls had donated shirts. And a couple of other small businesses have donated some of the expenses where we hanged up banners in the gym and stuff like that. So, you know, they can definitely reach us through the website and they can actually go through a lot of the stuff that we've been doing. And it's not just this event. Uh, Retroaction Sports also deals with a bunch of other community events. One of the things uh, my partner Jamal Green has every year for about the last five years is he does an academic banquet for athletes where he recognizes any athlete, basketball, football, tennis, badminton, you know, whatever the case may be, if they maintain a 3.0, he receives them as a plaque for awareness of academic achievement. So we do, like, a lot of other things outside of this uh, with that. So, you know, any sponsor that, you know, feels is listening and that definitely wants to get involved with the retroaction sports movement, you know, it goes way beyond this stuff because we're just trying to help these kids further education and, and give them a little bit more flexibility at life. You know, this is this is act. This is a great uh, program. And, you know, I wish they had more things like this when we were coming up. But, um, you know, I love what you guys are doing. So, you know, anytime you guys need some promotion or you need anything, you know, okay, y'all got us. You know, then we can we can always help out. But um, one more time, just tell everybody uh, the website where they can get in touch with you guys and the dates of the actual events. Yeah, the website is www.retroactionsports.wordpress.com. I know it's kind of long, but, you know, we're working on it from our starter system, and it's just true, you know, true, www.retroactionsports.wordpress.com. And, again, the event, is the event, the boys' event, will be held on April 18th, which is a Saturday, um, at Imhotep Charter, which is located in West Oak Lane, Philadelphia. And then the girls' event will be hosted at Mastery Picket Charter School, which is right off of, um, for the Philadelphia listeners, which is right off of Shelton and Wayne, 5700 Wayne Avenue, located in the Germantown section. All right. Question. Be, and that other, the other game for, uh, the other Go game ahead. for, uh, students that are, or, or, uh, guys that have gone on and graduated from high school, when is that game held? Well, You're talking about on for that yourself? particular subject, um, what, it's Absolutely. actually within the 18th. That's, that's the boys. That will actually take place on the 18th. As Mr. Green already talked about is, you know, we have certain kids that are talented that, you know, it just didn't work out the traditional way. And, you know, they get a chance and obviously – they have to be serious. We have a little bit of a filter system when we're dealing with these type of kids because we got to make sure that if we're exposing you to coaches, you're serious about taking the opportunity. 
But they will actually be playing. We have a specified game where we deal with kids of that type of qualification, whether they're uh, a junior college or they're a couple years removed from high school. You know, we let the coaches know, like, these kids are these, are these type of qualifiers. And, you know, coaches are always looking, particularly certain type of schools, are always looking for mature type of kids, particularly Division threes and Division twos, and, like, a little bit distances. You know, they're always looking for those type of kids. But for that criteria, they'll take place on the 18th. Okay. All right. Well, you know, we, you know, ever since we heard about the, um, the event, we've been pushing it to coaches, uh, eligible players, um, AAU programs, you know, whoever we can. So we're going to do whatever we can to help y'all push it up until that, uh, until the actual date. And we'll definitely be in the house to, to see some great basketball that day. So I want to thank you guys for y'all coming down moments to come on. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to make it up there. I love, uh, Love to see some good basketball, and you know this 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 is the type oh, of man where be good. players going to be hungry. So we're definitely going to be in the house, man, to support you fellas. Um, so Jamal, Rich, we we really appreciate it, man. Um, everybody, check out right. retroactionsports.wordpress.com. Um, and and if you have any kids out there, or if you're a coach, or whatever, if if you're interested in this. Uh, hit us up, warroomsports.com, or you can hit us on our Facebook or Twitter, and we'll give you all the information you need. Fellas, it was a pleasure, and we'll be talking to you guys again because, you know, we're going to link up for some more events in the future. Thanks, man. Appreciate really appreciate it. It. Absolutely. Thank you, everybody. All right, no doubt. All right, that's Jamal Green and Richard Guillen from Retro Action Sports. Everybody, uh, check out that website, retroactionsports.wordpress.com. All right, that, that sounds like a, a a really good program, man. It sounds like they're helping a lot of uh, youngsters who who might otherwise not have the opportunity. You know what I'm saying? So that's, that's definitely yeah, a good thing. Gra- Grassroots. I, I okay. really appreciate what they're what they're trying to accomplish, man. I really yeah. do. So yeah, we will be they're reaching out. Mm-hmm. Basketball is an amazing sport in places, you know, even if on a D2, D3 level, you know, has the ability to take you places, man. So uh, I definitely salute them for what they're doing and continue the good work. Um, speaking of that, man, it's time for us to talk a little bit about some uh, some college. Yeah, let's, let's um, talk about this tournament, man. <laughs> um, yeah, we, we, we already got Audible out the way, so let's, let's talk about what we've seen so far in this tournament. Jimmy, I know we were talking off air. So I know just like me, your bracket is already on destruction mode right now. <laughs> I mean, for me, like I see people get like real in their feelings about this every year. Like, I guess because people play in these big money pools, so it actually means something to them. Like for me, I don't play in any pools that cost me more than I play like in a one twenty dollar pool and I play in our free pool. Um, and that's just us trying not to give out a prize, but uh, pretty much. But see, for yo, me, it's like, yo, this thing. No one. I've never met anyone that get a perfect bracket. Although people have a lot, you know, you see people a lot. My bracket only got. I never seen it. Um, yeah. And the thing is, I'm a coward. I'm not gonna lie. When I'm watching uh, the games and whatnot, I mean, we're not watching the game. When I'm filling my bracket, yo, even if I want to pick an upset, I don't have the guts to do it most of the time. So <laughs> I end up like picking chalk or except for, like maybe one twelve over a five or. Or one like nine over an eight. You know, I was about to say I mean? so my, my upsets practice. are usually nines over eights. I think I picked nine a uh, three nines over eights. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. So I'm really a coward when it comes to picking a bracket. And the funny thing is I, I have won one, but you know, I'm not one of these people that win in fantasy football or brackets and say it's skill. It's all luck. Um but my bracket is completely busted. The one thing I have yeah. noticed watching this and I'm saying it now, even though I'm going to be a, a coward next year as well. But in, in NCAA, there's so much parity. I mean, even the games, um, you know, where you have an 11, say, playing a 6 or a 12-5, you know, the games are close. All these games are close. I mean, yeah. VCU, Ohio State, they're playing now is 62-60 with three minutes left. That's a 7 and a 10. It's so, like, you know, these te- it's a lot of parity. Maybe not the ones, you know, and their opponents, but everybody else, like, it's a lot of parity in the game. That's actually one that I picked. Yeah, I pick Ohio State or VCU. See, but that that's still a kind of a cowardly 
um, upset call because Ohio State is still, you know, they're usually yeah. a better basketball they're program bigger. than VCU. So I'm figuring, okay, we got yeah. Ohio State all the way down to 10. I'll pick them to win because they're more likely to win same. over VCU, who's considered a mid-major anyway. So I did you the call same. that and try My to look like was a money up. <laughs> Cause that's LeBron school, so you know it's a, the fix is in. But anyway, um, <laughs> it's a lot of parity. Um, on one one other thing, I want to bring up before B also starts talking about the tournament is that the fundamentals of the game are just completely terrible. Um, I'm not gonna get on the rant about competitive greatness, but I've seen multiple point guards who shoot below 50 percent from the foul line. Like I don't know, I don't know if I've ever seen that before. Like point guards can't shoot foul shots in the NCAA. Yeah. Like foul shots. I I watched a game earlier. Um, I think it may have been that uh, that U, UAB Iowa State game. And uh-huh. what I what I like at least like the first ha- when the game first started, maybe the first half of the first half. Like what I came out with is it seems like these teams, and it may be something that tells you about college football in general. I mean, college basketball in general. That's- it seems like nobody respects any concepts of the game of basketball before the advent of the three-point line. These teams are just hoisting threes. Both teams started out like two for ten from the from the three-point line, but kept shooting them. A lot of that, is, <laughs> a lot of that is analytics, and uh, you know that's because if you watch the NBA, it's a lot of that nonsense too. I watched mm-hmm. the NBA game the other day. Uh, yeah. I forgot who it was. The yeah. just played somebody, and it was like threes flying everywhere. Like, that's the game. Yeah. That's the game. That's the, the. I won't call it growth. I'll just say that's the direction that the game has taken, and and it, I don't know whether it comes down from the NBA or it's coming up from AAU, because uh, it's you know it's it starts probably parallel to to high school, but even a little before high school, these kids offensively work on shooting threes, trying to elevate the dunk, and I guess from a technically sound standpoint, pick and roll. Those are the only three real things that you 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 focus on. It, 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 it's, you know it's, it kind of is disgusting. There's no footwork. There's no focus on footwork. There's more focus on handle. There's no there's no post or back to the basket, you know, even if you develop two moves and two counters. That stuff doesn't right. happen. Even big men – Big men want to shoot threes and play on the perimeter because it gets more glory. So that's a good point, B. I'm be because six, if you look at or six, ten, Chuck, you look at the team that get praised for their bigs right now in college uh, basketball: Kentucky's, Arizona. Yeah, they're just athletic. Yeah. They're not like you said, back to the basket, the type of dudes that you can go to when you're down in the shot clock or if you're, you know, in the clutch and you need to just get a bucket, you can't just go to people on the block like you used to. They're just athletic mm-hmm. bigs that can do things that, that are amazing. They're, they're, they're picking people roll. of their size. They're picking, they're, picking roll, they're picking roll big guys. There's two types of big guys in a combo. There's a pick and roll dude who just rolls to the basket with no skill and jumps. And then there's a pick and pop guy who doesn't roll, but, but sets the pick and, and, fades off of it for a, 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 a long range jumper. And then occasionally you got a guy that can do both, but there's a multitude yeah, of reasons terrible. for that. A lot of that has been out of the game too, even with the rule changes um, and, and the influx of like, you know, the European game, a lot of that has been legislated out of the game. Um, but what I find interesting is when I, and I know I'm harping on this, but it bothers me when I see guards who literally have this, like, I'm not going to sit here and pretend I watch a bunch of college sports. I watch a lot of college games, and not, not, you know, as many as some people. But when I look at their statistics, and they shoot the same from three that they do from the foul line, that bothers me to no end. Like, because I saw so many games yeah, come he's down. he's taking a bucket. shot at you, Ray John Rondo. He I'm about to say the you. Rondos are the word. <laughs> the Ray Johns. <laughs> but, but I, I, no, but, yo, I'm talking about these college guys. Like, I've seen so many games today come down to the end, SMU and, and whatnot, right. and – Yo, point guard can't shoot foul shot. If your point guard sh- can't shoot a foul shot, yo, who are you? You can only imagine what the big men do. But some of these point, like yeah. your point guard. So I just mean uh, I saw amazing. a guard today in a in a in a clutch situation. He made one of two, but you know before stepping to the line, they said dude was a forty two percent foul shooter. He's a damn guard. Like 
Go practice, dude. That's like, what I'm not saying. I saw that. I saw that a couple <laughs> times today, and that amazed me. Like, yo, the foul shooting has just stunk. I mean, the foul, the, the foul <laughs> shooting I saw today was like the equivalent of a late term abortion. It was just nasty and stunk. <laughs> like, so my, the fundamentals yo. of the game are gone. So the, 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 the game of basketball itself has changed. Um, you, you mentioned it, how the bigs now are just complete athletes. Um, you know, it's kind of like Kevin Garnett, in essence, changed the game. He's like the – I don't want to call him the first, but I remember, like, once Kevin Garnett came in the game, the big man changed. Like, right. they, they didn't really play back to the basket. KG really didn't play that much back to the basket. He had a little bit of that game, but not really. Well, man, I, I want to turn to the Villanova game and give the hometown some love right now, but we got this barn burner happening in the in the VCU Ohio State game, 66-66 with a minute 15 left. Um, There were some upsets today, as I mentioned earlier. You had two number threes go down. Both of these three seeds were from the Big 12 Conference. Um, UA, UAB upset uh, Iowa State, and Georgia State upset um, – Number three, Baylor and R.J. Hunter, the coach's son for Georgia State, went bananas in the last three minutes of the game and hit the game winner uh, with a few seconds left. Um, that game was 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 crazy. And this is why I love March Madness. Like we talked about a few minutes ago, how a lot of people, you know, they take their bracket so personally. So when they lose a game, they're upset. But I love seeing this like especially in the early rounds, like it might not be that exciting in the later rounds when one of these Cinderella's get to the, you know, to late rounds in the dance and then they get smashed because they finally realize that they're not supposed to be there. But early in the tournament, <laughs> this is really exciting. So, you know, I, you know, it, it messes up my bracket, but I don't care. I'd rather see the excitement. That's why I don't gamble too much. Yeah. I'm not going to put a bunch of money in there. <laughs> it was made for TV. His pop was on the sideline falling out of his chair. He had a, uh, uh, torn like Achilles or something. So my man he was tore his like, Achilles <laughs> celebrating when they won the uh, conference tournament to get into to the tournament. <laughs> yeah, he was coaching from a rolling chair. He fought the chair. It's like a it's Disney movie clutch. and whatnot. <laughs> yeah, his son, his son, the half breed hit that major three. Like he put up, he put in work at the end of the game. Um, and <laughs> well, and, you know, I saw the pom poms as be off uh, anointed them. Start talking about his NBA career and how far he's going to, um, how high he's going to go in the draft. After my man was 16 <laughs> points in the first round. Well, I um, <laughs> I, I I saw that he's tr he's thinking about um leaving and foregoing his senior year he to needs go to change that thought. Um, his his dad is trying to talk him out of it, but like I wonder if his dad is trying to talk him out of it because his dad is the head coach of the program and he can use his best player for another year, or if his dad really doesn't trust his pro prospects at this point, or if it's a little bit of both, I mean, cause you're looking out for your son. So, you know, if you think your son is good enough to go to the league, I think that might be a little more important than your program at the, at the moment. That's your son. Or making him a better player and making him stronger. Yeah. Like, I mean, here's the thing. I'm all for people leaving early. Like I, I'm not about that. I, I'm not one of these guys that says, Keep him in school. It makes the NCAA game better. It tears up the it tears up the NBA. But my thing is, do it if you're ready. You're, is my point. <laughs> yeah, if you're not ready, and obviously your pop is the head coach at the university, just won a game. Like he doesn't seem to come from like you know. Um, I don't know their situation, so let me not say I know it. But he seems to have a foundation there. Take your time because you know you can go back and become a higher prospect. I haven't heard of this guy until this tournament, and even watching him play, he didn't come off to me as someone. Who's going to be an impact player right away? Well, he, he they said you know he, he struggled in this game, um, no doubt. Like this, I guess the the first portion, the first part of this game wasn't indicative of how he's played throughout the season. I think he may have averaged twenty points a game this season, but um, you know this is when you get, get tested. I mean, you're playing against the, the, the bigger boy, so <laughs> his pop is a coach. He probably got to be all the plays call for him. Pass the ball to Will. On the uh, Fresh Prince. Thing, Joe, <laughs> yeah, like. Fresh Prince. <laughs> hey, but um, S SMU went down to UCLA on what was a pretty controversial goaltending call. Did you guys see that? Yeah, I did. I did. What's, um, what are your thoughts? I, was it goaltending or it's not? It's one of those things. Where when you watch it, it's like, no. Nah. But when you read the rule, it's like, yeah. 
So it's one of those things. A lot of times you see in sports where the rule just the rule just stinks. It's not yeah, like the I, ref I, got it wrong, but the rule. When I first saw it, I I thought you know, in, in live action, I thought it was an air ball. So I was like, oh, never. That's not a goal 10. That's not a goal 10. But I watched the replay about 50 times and every single time I saw something different. So I was on the fence with it. And then, you know, I, I, I listened to everything and, and read uh, the rule on it because they were basically telling you what the rule was. So, of course, I went to research it. And, and you're right. It seems like by the, the rule, it probably was the right call, but for me, I still see something different every time I see the uh, the replay. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, did he hit the ball it. into the rim? Did he touch it after it hit the rim? Like, I can't tell. It's crazy. It's a crazy way to go out, man. Yeah, it's a, t- it's a tough call to go out on. Um, man, SMU, you know, salute to them for getting the six seed or whatever, but it's another one of those situations where the parity is there. UCLA – for all intents and purposes, has a, a a lot, you know, probably the in terms of like college basketball history, it doesn't get any bigger than UCLA. But that's right. was the so, higher seed. I mean, Larry Brown, yeah, Larry Brown turned that program around. <laughs> that's what I'm. That's what I'm saying, Jim. Like you got UCLA at number ele- at, at an 11 seed. So if you pick UCLA, you might be thinking that you're being brave picking an upset. But that's UCLA, man. Like they. Not these particular kids, but this is just a program that has experience in these tournaments. So, like a Michigan State, like they go in, I think, as a seven seed. But Michigan State always has a chance to advance to the Final Four. Always, no matter what seed they go in. <laughs> but I, 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 I picked SMU to, to go a few rounds, Jim. So that's definitely a bucket a bracket buster for me. So did I. I picked SMU. That's off the go. strength of Larry Brown. Sixteen. Yeah, just just off the strength, because like Jimmy said, he turned he really turned that program around. Remember last year at this time, everybody was talking about how SMU got snubbed and and didn't make it to the tournament. Yeah, you know, the year before that, they just weren't that good. <laughs> so, good. in this yeah, little bit of time, Larry good. Brown had them here, but you expected them to advance, and they didn't. Me and B. Austin was talking earlier about Larry Brown and his legacy in basketball, what have you. And I think he's an all-time great, but I think college is no where man. he belongs um, because, you know, nobody in the pros seems to like the guy, and they stopped playing for him after a while, which is why it was difficult for him to win championships uh, because his players basically didn't want to play for him. But in college, because you get guys in and out so fast, Paul, it's like that's where he belongs. I mean, he's one of uh, only a couple guys to win at both levels. He's won an NBA championship and a college championship. But college is where he belongs. I think it's like, more so Larry. Larry's just old. Larry's old school, yeah, the coach is old school, and it and it doesn't do sit in the NBA college. where you're dealing with with grown ass men who are millionaires who realize that they are more important a lot of times than the coach. In in college, you get to exercise the I'm your dad, I'm the captain now type thing, and and the kids <laughs> will at some point respond. And, yeah, and that's what Larry tries to exercise on. The pros. <laughs> yeah. Larry tried to Larry tried to trade Allen Iverson. Like, come on, man. <laughs> you can't try to and almost sold it sold it to Pat Croce that this would be the best thing to do. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and look, it was all it was all a prisoner of the moment move too, because Larry Larry will tell you he loves AI one second and mean it, and AI will make it make a dumb play and it's yo, we gotta trade this guy. Yeah, it's, it's all impulsive. Yo, he be trying to trade Larry. him mid game. Mid game he tried to like pull pull a trade on AI, man. But listen, man, <laughs> yo, I know, I haven't I haven't seen, like, one player that used to play for him in the pros that likes him. And you got so many other coaches, like, dudes will still run through a wall 10 years after retirement. But nobody likes <laughs> nobody likes Larry Brown. 10 years. So he found he's found Lombardi, like, he's 60 in- years. Lombardi still got, Yo, like, he's in- elderly yeah. men calling him grandpa. But, um. Well, who was that? <laughs> what coach is that? Vince Lombardi. Vince Lombardi. Oh, oh God! Oh my God! Yo, Vince Lombardi had a cult. That's not a—he wasn't a coach. He was a cult leader. I—I I don't even compare him to other coaches. I compare him to like Jim Jones and guys like that. Like you know, because he did what David cool. Koresh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, speaking of Larry Brown, back back to him. I want to read you guys something. Now you know he and Calipari are are kind of close. Like he had Calipari um, in the mix when he was the Sixers coach. Um, when Calipari was you know, just had that pipeline of players from Philadelphia 
during that period when Larry Brown and I Allen Iverson was in Philly, you know, they were just close. Um, so he was asked about Kentucky and this historic run that they're attempting to complete during this uh, March Madness period. And, and this is what he said about Kentucky. He said, I don't want to put pressure on John. I feel real close to him. I'm so proud of what he's done. I think they'd honestly make the playoffs in the Eastern Conference if they were in the NBA. So we've asked our, our, our you know, our Facebook uh, fans, what do you guys think about that? Do you think, do you agree with Larry Brown or, or do y'all think he's disrespecting the NBA with, with comments um, like this? Being a guy who's been on both levels, what do you guys think? He, he's, he's, he's taking a shot at the NBA overall and where it is because the way the game is played today um, probably grates on his nerves and goes against his It's not played the right way, quote unquote. It's not played, quote, quote unquote. The, Larry, the unofficial Larry Brown slogan is playing the right way, and it's not. Mm -hmm. He has not played the right way. Um, to, to Kentucky's credit, um, they do have five, maybe somewhere between five and seven NBA caliber talents on that roster. Oh, and so, <laughs> yeah, when, when you say that, it's kind of like, okay, I, I, I see where you're going. I will say that they can beat – they can definitely beat my Sixers. They can probably beat the Knicks. They may. They can't beat the Timberwolves. Uh, but when you say when you say can teams, beat, you just mean in any mm -hmm. given game, or do you? Because you know when you go to the NBA and you are playing with the big dogs, this is a series now. Yeah. Like you think they can yeah. beat the Sixers in, in, and the Knicks in a series? No, no, I don't. I think that I think that the average when see when things like this get when things like this get thrown out. Sometimes as fans, we analyze them with our emotion and we look at how good Kentucky is on, on the level they're playing at and we look right. at how bad some teams are in the NBA. But you got to realize that even the bench guys in the NBA were solid starters, if not star-level players on the college level. So it's like you can't really – the two the, the jump from college to NBA, these are grown-ass men. Um, who, who, who work at their craft even more than the college kids and in a, in a, at a different level. So I, I'm, I'm not going to disrespect a, a, a professional player and say that these college kids could beat them in a series. But I do believe that they could win a game or, or two. Okay. Right, let me, have the talent. Let me jump, Go ahead, Jim. Real let me jump in real quick. Cause what I was going to say is usually this, this question comes up like every year. Um, the number one overall seed in college, they always ask, could they mm -hmm. beat an NBA team? Um, it always come up. And most of the time I, I fall along the lines of B. Austin where I say, <clears throat> excuse me, where I say, you know, these guys are professionals, they're still this. But as I watch the NBA this year, a lot of these guys, and I'm talking about, you know, teams that maybe go 10 deep, are all guys that probably still should be in college anyway. It's not like it used to be where there was a huge separation of the college player and, you know, an NBA player, especially if you're talking about a young NBA team. I mean, you brought the Timberwolves. Now, granted, Timberwolves do have, a little, you know, some veteran presence. A lot of those guys should still be in college. Majority of their team, that's a young team. But, you know, so it's not the same. I'm not saying Kentucky could beat anyone in a series, but I think it's getting a lot closer than, than it used I to agree. be when we talk about before. They can't beat no grown men. I agree like, with not the grown youth. men on a lot of I agree with the youth. NBA. I agree with the youth thing. I agree with the youth thing that you're, that you're saying, Jimmy, totally. And the Timberwolves are a great example because they probably are like the youngest collection of players. But the fact that they play with grown men night yeah, in and night can, out, look at grow the up, advancement grow. in – yeah, look at the advancement in, in Wiggins' game. He's not the same player he was 12 months ago, just 12 months well, ago. Not. So to put well, him well, – also a different game. It's also a different game. College game is yeah, more it's structured a different game. Than, right. But with that being said, we're also talking about Kentucky, who plays a pro style offense with pro style with pro players. Kentucky is not the same as, as you know, say Providence or UCLA or or you know Villanova. Kentucky wow. is a bunch of pros playing against college players. I think Larry Brown's particular statement was absolutely ludicrous, and he's one of my favorite coaches of all time, but I would have to tell him the FOH with that because he didn't just say they could beat someone in the Eastern Conference. He said they could make the playoffs in the Eastern Conference. So 
in essence, we're no longer talking about the Sixers, the Knicks, stuff like that. We're talking about maybe the Miami Heats of the world and and whoever's down there battling for those seventh and eighth spots. You know, we're we're talking about those kind of guys. So those aren't generally the teams who have a bunch of, you know, young guys on the team. So his statement, in my opinion, was crazy. There's no way they would win. So you're basically saying they're going to win maybe 40 games, 42 games. No, hell no. Yeah, not, not a shot in the world because you look at teams like, you know, the Sixers, as bad as they are, they've still won like 15 games in the NBA and have beaten some good teams at, at times and got gotten slaughtered by everybody else. But what I just think is, we don't have to have it. We're gonna have to have this out, man. We're gonna have, like they're gonna have to, gonna like, have to have a seven game, game, game series <laughs> with. <laughs> no, but you know what? Like I, 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 I get where you guys are coming from, but I think Kentucky is like just something different. Like I don't like they kind of like they cheat, man. There's no, there's no way they don't cheat. There's no way you get that many pros on. You know, I sound like I'm hating, and I am. But like, yo, nah, I mean, what but... play is for. But I also understand what B. Austin's saying about their advancement because they have to grow up playing with those guys. He used Wiggins as an example. Look at Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis could make a claim for being a top five. He could make a claim for being a top five player in the NBA right now as we speak. And I don't think it's questionable. Yeah, but he came in raw. You know what I'm saying? Not being much in the in the way of an offensive player on the NBA level. Now he's a top five scorer in the NBA. So, you know, Yo. it, it depends on how you are with your craft. We look at Kentucky. Th- their guards aren't that strong. I think NBA guards will probably eat the, the Harrison twins a lot. Yeah. And, and they're going to yeah, be in the NBA mess. at some point. But at as we stand, as we stand right now, yeah, I, I, I don't think so. I, I mean, def- I don't even think they could beat the worst teams in the league in a series, but basketball <laughs> is that sport where you can't base it on the, the any given day theory because basketball, you can go on a pickup game and, and lose to some dudes who just had a better day than you. That's, that's probably why they do series, you know, in basketball um, and on the professional I'm level. Of all of us now, not even intentionally say series. Shout out to Avery series. Johnson. Who, like changed our series. dialect. <laughs> Yeah. So so I think in basketball it is closer to football. Like if you say this about how they are, you know, they try to say the top team in Alabama can can beat the the Jaguars. The Jaguars will pummel Alabama into powdered dust, oblivion to whatever. Oblivion. Yeah, like yeah, that's just that's totally that's grown man. Like <laughs> well, as Mike Tyson as Mike Tyson says Bolivian. But um yeah, just beat him into here's my th- Here's my thing, man. Like I, I, I told, I totally get you. I just think that it's getting closer as the NBA gets younger. Um, NBA, you know, NCAA trying to do something about that, but you know, I, I would like to see it one day. I, I definitely think they would get pummeled, depending upon who they play. When he talks about making the playoffs, that's just crazy. Cause, yeah, he tripping. Like, Dwayne that. Wade will kill those guys. Um, <laughs> but we got a couple calls online who want to talk some, uh, some tournament with us, man. Uh, we got the homie yeah, Rob calling all the way in. California. You calling to it's talk like about UCLA. Rob, well, what's going on? You want to talk about UCLA, man? You in Cali, man. You want to talk about UCLA or what? I'm in Cali, man, but I've been in Tar Heels since I told you since diapers, man. Probably blue diapers, man. What's up? Tar Heels? <laughs> yeah. What's going on, bro? Yeah. Yeah, man. Be hard, oh, man. Send that Duke. Ivy League back. <laughs> did, did he say the D word? Uh-uh. What? Oh, uh, uh, but man, yo, 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 speaking of the D word, yo, I would have to say, what y'all think about Alex Okafor? From uh, from uh, uh, Duke. Duke. Yeah, yeah. I, I like his, I like his game. I mean, he's not, he's another, he's another product of where basketball is because he's not that exceptional to me, but because he plays with against subpar front lines. He looks a lot better than he probably is, but I think he'll be a solid NBA pro. Like I don't, I don't see him being, you know, All Star, All NBA, but I think he'll be good. I think he'll be a good player at the next level. Got a little back to the basket game. You can throw it in there and get, you know, ten points out of that. 
Well, these dudes these days, man, it's harder to call like who's gonna be what on the next level. I think than it than it has been before. Um, I, I, it is is really hard to call for me because you think back to uh, a cat like what's the dude name? I mean, who, who used to play for Arizona and um, which one? number two pick oh, of the draft? From, no, 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 no. Uh, more recent, the dude who played for the two. World. Damn, I'm having a brain fart. I think his name is Williams. Oh, Derek Williams. Oh, Derek Williams. Der- yeah, Derek Derek Williams. Williams. When I was, I was real big on him coming out. I thought he was going to be nice, and it's like you, you get to the league, and <laughs> it's like everything you saw in college, he just, he just he faded thing, into right? the bench. He's not, he's not, not terrible, Dev. He no, he's not, not terrible, star. but Rob, Rob. I, I saw him like when when he played at Arizona. I thought he was going to be a star in the NBA. I thought he was going to be a Here's star. Here's the thing, right about like, about basketball. Like when you move levels, man, it's all about how much you work at your craft, man. Because you got guys who just dominate on a collegiate level, and they get to the pros and they taper off. And you have guys who you know may not have been that dominant a basketball player, but they are in love with the game and they work on their craft all the time. We talked about Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis, it's so obvious watching him play that he puts work in. And I say that if you yeah, go back and watch the he's tape. A gym rat. He's a gym rat. I, 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 he, changed, I, 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 he changed his complete form. I mean, if you look, look at his shooting form, it's complete. I'm talking about a 180. He completely changed his shooting form from his uh, rookie season until now. And he's such a better shooter, shooting at a higher field goal percentage. He works on his back-to-the-basket moves like – it's evident that he puts the work in. It's not just the talent. A lot of guys are with raw talent, like that said. But it's about what. So it's it's, car, it's kind of hard to determine just looking at a college player. You could dominate on the college level and be a complete dud in the NBA. I I I I, I think B. Austin to attract it. No, you did too. We talked about the analytics before. But I think B. Austin attracted that we when he said when he is saying this when he said that they're really from high school on up. They're really not working on the fundamentals. They're working on showing threes and all that. And when come when you come to the NBA, you have to we have to have fundamental basketball. And you people when they can go in college and out out shot and out shine people with their athleticism. When we come to the NBA, you gotta work on your fundamental basketballs. I'm gonna get I'm gonna give you all examples. It's only like three. Rob, Evan Rob. Turner. I, I feel you, Rob. It's only like three teams in the NBA that play fundamental basketball though. Spurs, yeah. Hawks, and someone else. <laughs> what did you say about Evan Turner? Let him say what were you about to say about Evan Turner. Evan Turner, he got he he had like crazy athleticism coming out of college. I know I know some of y'all y'all mad that you know You're? y'all couldn't get John Wall, but you know he had crazy athleticism, terrible fundamentals. He had to go back to, back to the college level and work on the shot. Wait, you you thought you, wait you thought Evan Turner was crazy athletic? I've never thought that. He was all right. He was all right, but you know I'm just saying. Actually, I don't know I how thought, much Evan thought, besides know. his jump shot, I thought Evan Turner's fundamentals were pretty high, con- considering what comes out of college every year. Like John Wall was a freak of nature. He's the type of dude you know yeah, he had to get his fundamentals straight. John Wall. Is less skilled when he came in the league. John Wall is less skilled than at least three of the people in War Room Sports Company, and we've seen that up close and personal. He's a freak. He is athleticism personified. He had no skill. But here's my thing: he couldn't even. To, to your point, to your point about like Evan Turner, right? I watched Evan Turner play this year in Boston, and Evan Turner has like spurts where he's amazing. He doesn't seem to be getting like five. He can barely better. dunk. His game, his game is progressing in, in a way you would want someone to progress, like, you know, with years in a league. Like, the one thing that separates the good from the great players and, like, the legends from the great are how their game gets better every year. People think that, you know, Michael Jordan just came in the league and was Michael Jordan from day one. He absolutely was not. Same with Magic, same with Larry Bird, same with Hakeem. Uh, these guys, you would watch them play. They'd be 10 years in and would add stuff to their game. And that's what separates, like, you know, the legends from the great players and, and also the good from the great. So you really can't tell watching college basketball who's willing to go, like, put that extra work in. And, you know, that, that's why it's so difficult to draft because you really can't, like, there's, you can have them run all you want to. What, what do they run in a 40? How much can they bench press? But you can't really measure their heart. 
That, yeah. that, yo, that's true, because I, I was kind of skeptical about Kyrie Irving when he was coming out. And he was first over. I'm like, you know, Why? I mean, is Duke going to be, be because he got hurt? He was out for eight games, you know, so I'll. Oh, okay. Look at, yeah, because Curry. Like no, one, no one knew Steph Curry was going to blossom into what he is now. I know, or 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 the or the boy from um from Portland. What's his name? Um, Damian Lillard. Damian Lillard. Damian Lillard. Damian Lillard. Damian Lillard. Yeah. That can't. Yeah. All right. So who you got winning the tournament? Before we get you out of here, who you got winning the tournament? Oh man. Um, Don't say the heels. Oh, I got one tournament. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't want to say no to Dane because I don't want to get Frank get a wet dream, but. I'm gonna say Arizona. Okay, that that's actually. No, 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 Virginia. No, 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 all right, hey, well, Rob, man, thanks for your call, man. You better get in front of a TV, TNT. The Tar Heels about to tip off right now against Harvard. So uh, good luck to your bunch, and we'll talk to you next week, all right? All right, peace, man. Salute. All right. All right, let's get to the homie yeah, Phil from Tissue in the Tape. Phil, what's, what's up, going man? on, man? Tissue in the Tape. I you know what's good, man. Hey, man, I heard y'all talking crazy about about the alma mater, yo. Y'all gonna good, get though. that win today? <laughs> oh, oh yeah, we we about we about to uh, we about to look like um, Apollo Creed against uh, Drago, man. It's, it's about to get ugly in that joint, man. They going they gonna have to get the defibrillators out early. <laughs> it's all good, man. Yeah. I ain't greasy. You know what I say every time because we know how they do to Miak anyway. Whoever. The representative is is going to get the 16 seed. They're going to go against the best team in the country. We might even have to play in the little play-in game that they're trying to act like is a tournament game these days. But yeah. at least y'all represent. Like I said, the last time my school was in it was 92. I wasn't even in college. I wasn't even thinking about college in 92. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't even at high school in 92. <laughs> so at least y'all, at least y'all represent, man. Because for real, for real, y'all weren't supposed to make it this year. Like, no, not even man, in the we, we hustled hard, man. We we hustled they hard. Got, they had a losing record going into the Joe. So, yeah, mean, they got um they got hot in the, uh, the tournament game. Yeah, they seventeen and seventeen. So it's you know <laughs> it is what it is. But yeah, man, it's it's crazy though the the, the how the tournament goes and like I, I got a comment though on Kentucky. I'm I'm, I'm kind of with Jim, man. Kentucky is freakish. I I don't think they could yeah. win you know, they can make a playoff spot in the Eastern Conference. I'm not ready to go because I look at somebody like Mil- like Milwaukee who who has a, you know, they're mm. struggling. But yeah, they they're could, in the sixth seed. There's no way in the world Kentucky could beat Milwaukee on any given Sunday. And the, yeah. the Bucks are going to actually be be tough, you know, you know, coming up. Giannis, they, they Giannis, will, Giannis will give Kentucky work. <laughs> My man Giannis ain't no joke. Oh, so 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 <laughs> seriously, Greek Freak is not is not playing around. Mm-hmm. Yo, but my man can touch the ceiling Kentucky, without jumping. But I will. They, <laughs> if, if, I, I was looking at it. I was looking at a thing. If you added up their height, like of all the players on Kentucky, they'd be the second tallest team in the NBA. So I mean, yeah, they yeah. they have freakish athletes, and they could win some games here and there. I figured they'd win ten to twelve games because they'd have to play the Sixers a few times and the Knicks, <laughs> and they sneak the one in against the. The the magic, you know, but yeah, yeah or they might do that. They might catch the Spurs when Pop is like resting yeah, like where, where sixteen he only, players. Where, where he only got like the ball boys <laughs> playing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I mean that's what I said. Basketball, basketball is that sport though, where you know what I'm saying I've I've been in the gym before and and beat a bunch of guys who were supposed to be unbeatable in the gym. Like that happens. In basketball, like I said, it is more unlikely yeah. to happen in football. It's like, it's like but Larry Brown was hitting that. Team. He was hitting that G money talking about the playoffs, though. So. Oh yeah, yeah, man. It, 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 but it's like when the college dudes beat the dream team, and then the dream team was like, "Oh right. no, that's not, that's never happening again." And then they, you know, yeah. they realized they was the dream then team. Then they beat him by seventy two. Yeah, yeah. So they, they beat them so bad the second time though that I don't know if you can count that first one because because if you beat them that bad the second <laughs> time, then obviously they weren't taking yeah, you seriously. Yeah. That, that's 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 when you gotta uh that's when you gotta push reset on the uh 
on the Xbox. So, you know. Yeah, they, they but, took um, the cartridge out and blew it and make sure the game was working right. Like, let's, we got we to gotta win this back. <laughs> <laughs> yo, we wrote you, yo. But it, that, that's another thing, too, I wanted to, I wanted to ask y'all about, like, like we were t- y'all were talking about the fundamentals. Like the reason why they don't have fundamentals, or they 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 don't play with fundamentals, because it doesn't make sports center. We live in a society right. that's right. Right. sports center is everything. Like being on those highlights or everything is and one. You know what I mean, so if you can't yeah. if you can't be on an and one mixtape or on the sports center top ten, they not doing it. You know. <laughs> Yeah, you know I mean, so and, and I can, and I want to be real clear. I want to be real clear too, Phil. Today's players are highly skilled, so oh, there's no a big doubt. difference between between being and crazy skilled athletic. and fundamentally thin. Yeah, the the skill level is higher, and the athleticism is higher, but the fundamentals of the game, like basketball, is actually supposed to be played closer to the way soccer is played with the movement of the ball. Like, you got to pass. You have to move yeah. the ball. The ball moves faster than the man. These dudes will hold on to that thing and dribble the air out the rock to get their and own shot. As everybody to wants creating. to be Michael so, Jordan. When, when they realized uh, you could win a championship without a dominant center, they was like, oh, that, I'm, I'm not seven foot. I'm 6'2". I'm 6'5". I can do that. Mm, that's good. I'll, just, I'll just hold the ball hey, shoot every time. Try to get and then a lot, of real, a lot of them find out the hard way that they're not Michael Jordan. And then... Exactly. Yeah, I think it's something else. I, I, think, I think when they see Michael Jordan, it's not about like winning championships. It's like, oh, oh, you can get a Nike deal, Gatorade deal. You can that's be rich. <laughs> I know, if I get, I if, if I get enough myself, highlights. Myself, <laughs> you know what I mean? But, but again, 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 what I talked about a minute ago when talking to Rob, People want to be Michael Jordan, but they don't want to make the sacrifices or put the work in that Mike put in. Mike wasn't like Mike was amazing, a freakish athlete. But when Mike came back, when he came back, yeah, Mike his game was so fundamentally strong, and his work ethic was just like something we've never seen before. Nobody wants to do that, and that's why I, it's, it's sort of like I was telling Rob. It's so hard to look at a collegiate player and see where he's going to be. Like no one would look at Michael Jordan, even though he had a, a you know a, a great college career, and think that he would be what he was. Um, of course not. Rob brought up a guy like Jimmy, Jimmy Fredette. Jimmy Fredette was lighting college on fire. And yeah, that was me. He was drafted I, 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 ahead of Jimmy. Oh, he was, he was, he was, remember Scotty Thurman? Remember Scotty Thurman at Arkansas? Scotty Thurman left Jimmy Earth after was, college. <laughs> like, <laughs> like Peter Zoe, Jimmy <laughs> Fredette was drafted ahead of Clay Thompson, both the Morristons, Kawhi Leonard, Iman Shumpert. <laughs> I mean, even guys like Jim, Jimmy Butler, Norris Cole. Like yo, I don't even Jimmy Fredette. Like, like, where's he at now? <laughs> I don't, he just my bench. In my, but no, Scotty Thurman is a great, a great uh, uh, analogy because Scotty Thurman basically left Earth after, you know, after his college career. He was like, like he was like Kyle Curtis Ryan. Blow when we couldn't find Curtis Blow for like. 10, 15 years. And then somebody saw Kurt on the on the subway in New York, but. Yeah, oh, it, it, <laughs> Jimmy, like, Jimmy, like, Jimmy, like, Jimmy, Jimmy Fredette plays. Uh, he plays with uh with the Unibrow. Yeah, he just got there. Like, like, no, yeah. no, no, no. He, he, but, no, but just, he doesn't he's play with him. The team is the Unibrow. He's, <laughs> he's on the same team as the Unibrow. No, he, he as travels as with he travels with the Unibrow. He he travels with him. Ah, he travels. <laughs> he doesn't play with. They're him. on no, the same. Top ten pick. Hey, Yo, he was a top ten pick though. B. Austin, Jim, Jeff, I, I, I would, I would challenge y'all. If y'all put a poll on, on, on the, um, on War Room Sports right now and ask people who would they rather, whose career would they rather have, AI or Tim Duncan? I bet you, no question, you get way more people that would say AI. No rings, you know, dusted and disgusted, War. but they would rather be AI because AI is more, more what, what people legendary. Well, he's Phil, legendary. you. I think you would get a lot of people to say that, but I think a lot of people would say Tim Duncan just because people say what they think they're supposed to say. I think a lot of people would say Tim Duncan and not really mean it. <laughs> they would they would say yeah, Tim and not really mean it. Like, well, I think I'm supposed to. People are gonna holler at me. They're gonna scream at me if I say yeah, yeah. Phil, Yo, hey Phil, listen. I don't want to be because I understand exactly. I understand your question, and I'm all about the fundamentals. 
But Joe, I might choose AI too because I've seen some of the young men come on. Yeah, more yeah, yeah. There ain't no way. Oh, no. I want to oh, no, be no. any. I mean, come on. I I, I went I went to Hampton. He used to he used to be he used to be picking them off like you know like <laughs> battlefield or you know Call of Duty. But, I mean, he, it, he was it's a just sniper. What it was. Plus AI. Plus Bubba Chuck got bars too, man. Let's not forget that. <laughs> Jewels, oh, man. man. Don't don't forget uh, Jewels and Crew Thick. Yeah. <laughs> no, Jewel, man, but. Man. Oh man, yo! But now it's, it's just the tournament is just crazy. I love this time of year, man. Just because you get so many upsets, like watching, like watching uh, Logic uh, this afternoon. Uh, Logic going Georgia State uh, hit the game winning three pointer. That oh, was yeah. dope. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't Logic. That was a crazy shot too. That wasn't a good shot. Like he just he's no, it like hot potato the, the joint. But that's what you get like in the tournament. 30. You get all kinds of crazy shots that aren't exactly. supposed to go in that mm-hmm. happen and it makes those moments. Like they always gonna show Duke falling off his stool, you know and I mean celebrating his son hitting the, the game winning three pointer. You know, I just, a, you know yeah, it was, I also want to let y'all know. Oh yeah, because like Phil, that's gonna be a part of one shining moment at the end of the oh, joint. Of course. They're gonna have Luther singing, they're gonna show Duke falling off the seat. But I I'm, I just want to let y'all know that you know I I'm a I'm a genius because Ohio State uh "Quote unquote upset VCU because I'm a genius like that." <laughs> yeah, I heard, I heard you picked them in the bracket. I didn't. I didn't. Yeah, even, yeah. I didn't even do a bracket this year, man. Because I was just like, when because when they asked like who was my final four pick, I said Kentucky and three unfortunate souls. Like I really, I'm really drinking the Kool Aid. I think it's going to be that. Like it's just going to be that. You know, matter of fact, a lot of people say that it's not going to be that easy. I'm not buying it. I think it's going to be. It's going to be some close games, yeah. but it's in the end, Kentucky's role. Okay. Here's I my just, thing, Phil. Yeah. I, I actually picked I, – I did two pulls. I picked Ohio State in both, by the way, um, just because I think um, it's fixed because of LeBron. But I picked <laughs> Kentucky in one, and then the other one, I actually picked Louisville to play Kentucky in the finals and for Louisville to win just because um, be I'm a conspiracy theorist. I'm a conspiracy theorist, and I think it's fixed. Um, you know, and it's a lot of pressure. Like, think about this: anybody Kentucky plays, the, the pressure is really on Kentucky. Like, they're playing against history, so right, it, right, everybody right. else is playing with house money, no matter who they play. No, well, if they me... end up playing Duke. I think I think the referees will get into it because I'm also a bit of a conspiracy theorist, and I'm 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 more of a uh, like they like to see certain teams win conspiracy theorists, and I think Duke would be one. Of, and I can't stand them, dudes. As a, as a UNC uh, fan. I can't, you know. I I hope they never score another basket. So well, let me let me ask I, you. I mean, I was going to ask this. Let's ask this before. Um, I keep Phil on the line for the question. I because yeah, yeah. y'all started to answer it already. I was going to ask you guys if there was somebody you think had a chance to knock Kentucky off. Who would it be, Phil? You think it's Duke because the ref was refs will probably get involved. No, I, no. Um, actually, in a weird way, I think it, I think it could. If they if they played the way they did against UNC Notre Dame, they I mean they would have to be lights out from three point. Right. I think they could get on one of those spurts. Um. Still, I still can't buy it. Uh, but that's the only team I could actually see if they hit like one of those crazy spurts where they score twenty points in two minutes, you know, or, or something like that. And Kentucky's way off their game. That that's the and, and even then I still think it would come down to the last shot. I think Arizona matches up well because of their size, but Arizona is starting to be the, you know, that's that's starting to be everybody's pick for somebody that could possibly upset them. So they're starting to be Arizona. They're starting to be that popular favorite. So they mess around and smack Arizona by twenty just because everybody. They they don't quite curl. Yo, the thing. Curl don't quite. The curl don't yeah, quite – just don't yeah. – <laughs> It don't quite I, curl. I, 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 I would have said Notre Dame too, I've Jim. i Arizona play. Uh-huh. And I just don't – I've watched Arizona play a couple times this year and I watched Kentucky play. Yo, it's like two different levels of play. And yeah, yo, it's I find Arizona yo. almost yeah. a couple games. To, to I just think Arizona is that team that Kentucky just can't chump because of how big they are. So I, I don't know I, if you know, they got the skill level to win. I, I, I still – I think I – think, Arizona would have to play a perfect game, and Kentucky would have to play one of their worst games of the year for the game to be close. That's that's I, the I, only way I see that happening. Notre Dame came to mind because of the how hot they were coming into the tournament, but they struggled today with Northeastern, they somebody who struggle. hasn't I made mean, the tournament since like ninety one, almost like Howard. They, they, they're, <laughs> hard, they're a horrible letdown team. Like I mean, I'm yeah. only saying them just off the strength of what they did in the ACC tournament. 
beating Duke and Notre Dame. I mean, Duke and UNC back to back. But I'm not gonna hold y'all, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get back into these games. I just wanted to uh, shout y'all out. Um, I'm about to fade into Bolivian. You know what I mean? Like, like the homie Iron Mike. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, All right. Make sure y'all check us good. out. What's up with night, your though? Niners, yo? Oh, oh, good. He, oh, it's below the belt. Well, um, we'll get to it later, man. <laughs> no, uh, like, like, like I was about to say, um, episode 52, uh, the Butterfly Effect on Friday. We're gonna talk about that. I mean, <laughs> no doubt. We, 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 go, we gonna be all right. Like, like the Kendrick song, like track seven. Um, we gonna be all right. I heard that. <laughs> yeah, we gonna, we gonna be all right. All right. I mean, Every nigga's a star. I, 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 I can't right, really say. I mean, I can't make dudes stay. You know, if you wanna, you know, God bless him. If you wanna retire, I know the thousand people that'll take his spot. I just wish he would have did it a little bit earlier, so we didn't have to wait to draft pick on him. Right. Or we right. could have went out in free agency and you know maybe got somebody to take the spot. So, All right. that, well, I mean, it is what it is, though. We, we go, Make we sure go y'all cool. check out Phil on Tissue in the Tape. Uh, yes, yes. On the Sports Podcast Network. Respect he holders. That's right. Respect yes, he holders. Sir. Take it easy, homie. We all let you. All right, no doubt. All right. One. Hey, well, look, fellas, speaking of that, you know, just a minute, because we're we going to get into a little bit of uh, NBA basketball to, to take the show um out but yeah borland chris borland out of, out of 49ers let's switch a little bit into that topic um real quick what, what are your guys thoughts on that because like phil was saying like as far as the niners go you know it would be nice i mean it is the off season the the actual nfl quote-unquote calendar season just started but it's like you have the the blow of patrick willis leaving and this is the guy where you're like, okay, we're okay with that because he filled in for him last year, and this guy might end up being a star. But then he's he has concerns for head trauma and and his future health. So, what do you guys think about his decision? I wonder whether the oh. medical uh, team over in San Fran has like data or some studies that no one else has because Cats is like, yo, I don't even <laughs> want to play football no more. <laughs> um, maybe they got you know how that special said that was that one doctor for that one team and everybody ignored it maybe they got that like there's somebody over there like that giving out new data new information um we know that that's an issue but the bottom line is there's always going to be people willing to take that chance to you know play a sport that they love for a living i think it's for the niners still just hit on it is unfortunate of his timing but something must have happened and if he was struggling with this one way or another he probably shouldn't have been on the field anyway you know what I mean? Because it's obvious, like, he, this, this couldn't have been, like, an overnight decision. So something he probably was struggling with. And yeah, he if he was he struggling was. with it, it's probably better that he does. He probably is better, it's better that he didn't play. You know what I mean? Because I think it's, you, you Tim, be I think it's an extremely brave decision to make because you're playing in the sport where you have the, the consummate tough guys and everybody's macho and you, you know, you can't quit this and that. I mean, you even had cats like Bobby Wagner tweet. No offense to anyone, but I'm playing until I can't anymore. I love this game too much. Um, but what his fears and his concerns, I mean, it's real. He sees a lot of uh, former NFL players walking around now with CTE or, you know, other uh, brain around, ailments. And they're just around. not the, yeah, they're, they're not the, the same people. And the, the quali- quality of life is, is just not there. And then you have the ones, uh, Rest in peace to Seau and Andre Waters, who committed suicide because of this kind of stuff. So, I, I think it's a brave decision because of the the sport that he's playing in. But um, he basically said, "Man, he, he can't put a price on his life." And I think this is a dude who probably was in for a, a pretty big payday because he was going to have to yeah, um, yeah. basically fill in for, for good Patrick season. Willis. He was only on his contract. He was only scheduled to make like five hundred and forty thousand dollars this season, and I think that's something they may have renegotiated with him before the start of the season. But he said, "I can't put a price on my life, and it's just too risky." So, shout out to him. There, there is a man. There is a man I feel who has who recognizes that he has options. Uh, <clears throat> that that's something that we you know we don't know about and we can't speak to specifically. But I just get the sense that he feels as though. He has options and risking his health and his mental health particularly isn't worth it to him. And, and you have to respect that. I do feel as though 
the awareness about the mental <clears throat> risk of football and CTE and just the awareness that's been in the media uh, created a climate where it's a bit more friendly for him to do this. Had he done this 10 years ago and definitely 15 years ago, he would have got killed. He'd have, been mm-hmm. killed, he'd have been ridiculed, yeah. But now, with the understanding of what head trauma, you know, causes, um, you know, people people have to respect this young man's um, ability to give up a game that you know most of us grow grew up dreaming of playing, and he had that opportunity, but it, it's not worth his health. So I, I, I respect his decision, and uh, and and applaud him. On the- about the data that y'all asked about, Phil, in the chat room, he says it's the same data, but he actually read it. <laughs> Other guys probably just didn't read it. Uh, I know Bobby Wagner That's didn't read it, the way he's talking. All right, so we, we just Bobby wanted Wagner, to um, talk Wagner about that real quick. That's a- I know um, B. Austin had plans, and, you know, I might uh, join him in the conversation. You know, we were going to talk about this on War Room Sports TV. So look out for that. If we do, we'll definitely, you know, spread it around and let you guys know that we we had that conversation and get you guys to watch. But before we uh, talk about a few subjects, a couple of subjects in the last five minutes or so in NBA basketball, I just wanted to give everybody the stat of the week. And the stat of the week uh, is in the NBA, and it's about Anthony Davis and a historic stat line that he put up, albeit in a loss, a 118-111 loss in double overtime to the Denver Nuggets uh, earlier in the week. Um, He became the first player since blocks were recorded, which is like in the last 30 seasons, to have 36 points, 14 rebounds, nine blocks, and seven assists in an NBA game. So this dude was really one block (laughs) and three assists away from a quadruple double. But he was the first player to have at least 36, 14, nine blocks and seven assists in the game. He also became the second player in NBA history to score more than 30 points, grab more than 10 rebounds, block eight shots and record seven assists. Uh, Hall of Famer David Robinson actually did it twice. So shout out to the Admiral. Shout out to Anthony Davis. I think we're about to be giving him another shout out when Jim get us into this basketball conversation. But that dude is quickly becoming a scary beast. Scary beast. Yeah. He like no doubt. Let's let's talk some basketball real quick though. And uh, the basketball talk is brought to you by Fanatics. For the best in your favorite team's merchandise and apparel, shop Fanatics. Shopping Fanatics is easy. Go to warmsports.com and click on your Fanatics logo and you can get some NFL, NBA, NHL, MLB, NCAA gear. Um and get your favorite football player's jersey before he retires. So that's warmsports.com and click on the Fanatics logo. Let's talk basketball. All righty, yeah. I found Curtis Blow, yeah. <laughs> you got it? You found it? <laughs> I found it. You still got the curl. <laughs> Yo, uh, <laughs> <last week. laughs> Kyrie Irving and the Unibrow, Anthony Davis. Um, I actually watched the Pelicans play. Um, I got a theory by watching the Fly play Pelicans. Them, but these two are, the, these two are uh, the players of the week that was their stats. All right, um, you know, Kyrie has been burning them up lately. Uh, he and the Cavs had a 3-0 and week. He led the league in scoring at 37.3 per game, uh, 4.7 assists, 4 rebounds, and 2.3 steals per game during the week. Um, of course, you remember he recorded his second 50-point game of the season when he had 57 points in that 128-125 overtime win over the Spurs. Um, he's been basically shooting lights out because you you know what he did in that game. But against Orlando, he went 12 of 15 from the field and route to 33 points. Um, so, you know, Kyrie is, is, is filling up the bucket right now. Davis, who we've been talking about off and on for the whole episode. Um, the Pelicans went two and one last week. And that one loss was that overtime loss to the Denver Nuggets that I just said. But you had to put him in there because he had a historical stat line in that game. Uh, he averaged 31.3 points, 10 rebounds, 6 assists, and 4.7 blocks per game during the week. Um, Anthony Davis, man, he's, like I said, scary beast in the making. Uh, I gave you the stats for the Denver game, but against Milwaukee, 
on March 9th, he had 43 points, 10 rebounds, six assists, and two blocks and a win over Milwaukee. So um, watch out, league. This dude is serious. Shout out to those dudes. Listen, I watched him play, right? I have a theory, man. Um, I think that he's probably amongst the top, you know, five players already in the entire game. But they're going to have to get rid of Tariq Evans, man. Like, yo, I feel like there's a little bit of jealousy in watching them play. Tariq beginning. Several times on the pick and roll. Yo, several times on the pick and roll where, like, like he's open and he don't want to give him the ball. Like, you just don't want to give him the ball. And I don't – I can't see any other reason other than the fact that, you know, that's his team at this point. Who's, who's not but you, Who's you, not? Who's not giving him the ball on the screen and roll? Oh, uh, your man Freaky Evans. Ricky. Right? And I think I think I think Ricky still wants to be like yeah. that guy. Like you know, as, as a rookie, he was nice. And like uh, you know, I, I don't know this to be fact. I don't know their relationship, but like watching body language, yo, I don't think they get along. And like, so they need to get him a point guard. But this dude is, is definitely amazing. His entire shooting form, like I said, I was I was watching that. Um, yeah, yo, he got I, a nice game from somewhere. Right I'm trying to find it. He got a nice I'm little jet. But it was a coach that demonstrated that he changed his entire form right. um, as, since the rookie till now. He used to shoot with the ball, like, you know, towards his, like, chest. Now he's boarded up and has a perfect form, and it's right. done amazing things for him. Um, and they used to say it used to be too low, so the ball used to get into his vision, and he couldn't see the basket, and he was bricklaying. Now it's, like, over you know, his head ever, a little bit. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Now his moves and, and on defense, he's a beast. Oh, he plays both sides of the ball, so he's he's, he's a scary talent, man. But they they definitely gotta get another guard. I'm you know I don't notice to be fact, but watching the game, I saw it a couple times. They almost lost against the Bucks the other night because he didn't want to give them the ball. It's like yo, Anthony Davis hit a shot, right? And then the Bucks scored. The Bucks had the ball, like the the actual Pelicans had the ball, and they could have iced the game with the basket. He like waved like he had a pick and roll, had Anthony Davis wide open and didn't give him the ball. He did it several times throughout the game when I was watching. I'm like, why is he not giving him the ball? Yeah, his his first step is crazy too. His first step got mental health issues. Um, scary beast, man. That's all yeah, I'm saying. He's he's yeah. young, man. He's like 21. He's get he's getting better. Like, think about that prospect, Yo, man. He's getting better. <laughs> crazy because everybody just like wrote it off. Like, yeah, this uh, OKC got this playoff spot. And they and they and they may get it, but the Pelicans, are, uh, yeah, you know, putting pressure on them, man. Like, you know, it's it's crazy, man. It's crazy. It's gonna be it's the, the West is just crazy. To think, like, if you were to put, yo, know, if you put them in the East. Anyway, with all that being said, man, his prospects are crazy. His upside is crazy, and you know, I like to see players like him who develop their game because he wasn't this coming in, but you can see the work has been put in. So it's, it's good to see the work being put in. And then to reap the benefits of it. Hey, well, Jim, let's talk about that playoff spot, though, because we, you know, that that other thing, that, that's we could talk about that. We can that that's not time sensitive. So let's talk about that a spot, man. Who do you fellas think? You know, because I know you just said like everybody just chalked it up as if the OKC was going to get it. Let's say with you know about fifteen games left in the season, who who would you who would you pick to get it at this point? And even though I talked all that trash, I'm going to say OKC, um, <laughs> just because of the experience. Just because of the experience, like. But you wouldn't OKC be surprised. Experience on their... But I wouldn't be surprised if the Pelicans do because, like, like I don't think they even realize how good they can be. That, that's that's what kind of team the Pelicans are. Like they're on they're on the upswing. So I wouldn't See, be surprised. But the difference, Jim, is the Pelicans don't have the league MVP coming back for the final stretch, and that's where it's gonna. That's, that's where. It's going to separate those dudes because OKC has been battling for this eighth spot for so long. And, you know, a lot of it they've done without Kevin Durant. So they have the luxury of him coming back and actually helping um, Russell Westbrook out, even though Ibaka went down again. So, you know, even if they end up getting it, it's going to be the same problem they had going into the playoffs last year. So it's, it's, it's very Yo. interesting. B, who you think? We're going to get it. All right. But if you Golden State, right? If you Golden State, you, you never really – you rarely get the one seed, if ever. You finally turn it around. Teams on the upswing, you get the one seed, and then you got, like, got to play OKC. 
It's a shame. Kind of crazy. <laughs> it is a shame, man. It's a shame. It's a shame. Because I'm I stick saying, by like they keep, they keep, they keep. if if they go in, into the playoffs fairly healthy, Jim, like I stick by my remember, remember I predicted them to win the NBA title, not thinking yeah. you know, my whole thing was I, I thought both of those guys were gonna be back, not for the whole season. I knew that they were gonna miss some early games in the season. But, you know, for Kevin Durant, things keep reoccurring with that foot, and he's sitting out a few games here and there. But I think <laughs> if he comes back and he's good for the remainder of the season, um, Ibaka just had a procedure. It doesn't seem like he's going to be out too long. I, I see <laughs> I see uh, Golden State having a very – even though they're a nice, deep team, I think I see them having a very disappointing year because they're going to do all of that. They might even get the league MVP. And then in the first round, like you said, it's very unfair that they're going to have to play a team who was one of the favorites to be in the title mix prior to all of the injuries. So it, it's going to be, a, it would be a great series, but I think that would propel um, OKC. And I think they might be back in the driver's seat. They get past that first round. So with that being said, you're, with that being said, you're taking OKC to win that eight spot. Yeah, I'm still taking them. Like I said, they, the, the Pelicans don't have – even if somebody like Drew Holiday came back, Drew Holiday coming back is not the same as <laughs> as Anthony da- – I mean, as uh, Kevin Durant coming back. So they they have a luxury that a lot of teams don't have down this final stretch. This is true. <laughs> Absolutely true, man. They're holding so on to the eighth spot the- without the league's MVP. <laughs> crazy that's because they may have the this year's league mvp on the roster like you know yeah. so, let me ask you a question though um mvp race as it goes right now uh because i saw a lot of people who um you know were knocking james harden down they saying that they don't like you know remain up there high in terms of their the standings in the western conference he may be knocked out of the uh mvp race what do you think right now about mvp um i don't think it's a standings thing because as you know, the last time we had this conversation, I had James Harden in the lead. I, man, every night I, I think Russell Westbrook is making his case, man. And if they end up getting that A spot off of these performances that he puts up night in and night out, I, I think you have to give it to him. But uh, it, I just don't see – you know, the voters are kind of traditionalists. So I don't really see them giving it to somebody that that squeaks in and gets the eighth seed. But I think right now, I think he may have taken the lead over um, for, for my yeah, particular ballot. Like I don't, I don't yeah. know if it's me, but they don't seem to like him either. He, uh, he don't they get, don't get the, the credit that he deserves, man. They don't seem to like him. So, and, that, uh-huh. and that plays a part in it, believe it or not. They don't seem to like him. Oh, yeah. And Especially like when you let the media vote on things. Like. <laughs> right now, it looks like hard yeah, they have it or leave it. The dude that he said, bro, what are you talking about? And y'all ends tripping. They're not going to vote for him. They, <laughs> they got to vote. Here you go. <laughs> you know, it, 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 Steph, Curry, Steph Curry is like everybody loves Steph Curry these days. He's like the go-to guy. Who knows? It'll be interesting, man. But, you know, the season is winding down, and we'll be here to talk about it, man. But we definitely have to get out of here now. Thanks for joining us again, the Warm Good People. Shout out to everybody in the chat room, everybody on Facebook, Twitter, on the calls that chimed in. We definitely appreciate it. Those calls we couldn't get to, we apologize. Special thanks to Richard Gillian and Jamal Green of Retroacting Sports. Talk about that amazing program he has in Philadelphia, the Unsigned Senior Basketball Showcase. Don't forget, uh, hit up our website and go to their website to get more information. Tune in next week, same time, same place, live right here on demand on the Warm Sports Podcast Network to get a lot of great sports talk. Enjoy March Madness and anything else happening in sports. So until then, enjoy your tournament and your sports week. Check us out, warmsports.com. You'll find our links for Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, iTunes, everywhere. You'll find right at warmsports.com. You'll find links for our webcast. Farmers only. Warm Sports TV. <laughs> our Farmers only links as well as our Christian Mingle links. Until next time, everybody, don't accept mediocrity. Be steadfast in the war against ignorance. We'll see you chumps on top.
sensitive than oh well. Yeah. Physical podcast, let's talk sports. Uh. Showtime like magic in the box court. Magic. Listen live, push one to join in. Rip your team or listen for your enjoyment. Hip hop scholars, tip stop and knowledge. Uh. Should be in sports credits, I ain't talking college. E. Five guys, no beef though. Corporate secret, but the streets know. Bellafani, I got a chief flow. KC royalty, I'm in beast mode. Two hours, get your game up. Who's the best in sports cast? You better name us. World of sports. www.warroomsports.com What? Ain't no more to it.